One of the biggest myths about car insurance is that it's all one insurance. In fact, it's actually seven different types of insurances, which we will go into right now. The first component of car insurance is bodily injury protection. So if you cause an accident that injures another person, this will pay for medical bills, lost income and wages, funeral services, um, pain and suffering for any damage that you inflict on someone else, other passengers. This includes drivers, the pedestrians on the road, the passengers in the driver's car, really anyone who was hurt because of an accident that you caused, uh, any kind of bodily damage, any medical bills is going to be covered under bodily injury protection. It's a required coverage, which just means that every state is gonna make sure you, that you have that, um, so you can't opt out of it. It's also between 20 to 30% of a total premium, so for me, it was 30%. But one thing to note is that it does not cover any injury to you or to any of your family members. In terms of coverage, ideally you wanna aim for about 300,000 per person and 500,000 per occurrence. Now that is a lot and we'll get into why. So if you can't afford that, you should at least get 100,000 per person and 300,000 per occurrence. Again, you can't afford that, try and get as close as you can. By the way, you're going to hear me say accident that is your fault a lot, right? And the reason why is because all of these insurance coverages kick in only in cases where the accident is your fault, right? So if someone else hits you and it's their fault, all of their insurance is gonna cover you. Your insurance is only going to come into play when you hit someone and the police determine that it was your fault. So you probably heard me say get 300K or 100K. What I'm referring to there is basically what's called a coverage limit. That is just the maximum amount that an insurance company will pay in the case of a claim. By the way, you're gonna see this notation a lot, which is, for example, 100K slash 300K bodily injury protection. So that's just is a industry standard notation for 100K per person and 300K per occurrence. Okay, let's say that you have a 100K, 300K policy, which means again, 100K per person, 300K per accident. And you're driving around and you see SpongeBob and you're so shocked that you see SpongeBob that you actually drive into him and his two passengers. So you've hit three passengers. They're all claiming that, you know, their legs are hurt and stuff like this. Um, well, how, do, how much does the insurance cover, right? In this case, basically they would cover 100K per person and then 300K for the whole entire accident. So, if you hit SpongeBob and you cause 150K in damage, first of all, how could you, how dare you? Second of all, the insurance company would only pay up to 100K and you're liable for the other 50K that you hurt him. I can't believe you ran into SpongeBob. Anyone but SpongeBob. So I actually did an analysis where I got the lowest amount of coverage possible, which was 15K, 30K. And I got the most amount of coverage, which was 300K, 500K. And I checked out the difference compared to the amount of risk protection that you get, right? So turns out that it's only a $21 per month difference. And that gets you 20 times the protection, right? So. It is so cheap to add and extend the coverage that you have. You might as well just do that. Okay, so if there is one thing to know about insurance, it's that it is really not the place to be cheap, right? With car accidents, it is becoming increasingly common for people to claim, you know, oh, they're out of work, they have this and that injury, they have to go to months of physical therapy, and you just don't want to be on the receiving end of that if you're at fault, because you can be sued for that total amount. I remember when I was researching car insurance, there were so many examples of people who were being sued because of these damages, right? Bodily injury protection is not something that I want to mess around with. Just aim to get the most coverage that you can if you can afford it. Truly, in that SpongeBob picture, whichever driver caused that accident is so financially screwed, it is not even funny. Bonus points, if you know what episode this is from, please comment it because I do not remember and I kind of want to know. Property damage. Okay, so if you are at fault in an accident and you cause damage to anyone's property, so this could be a car, mailbox, house, whatever you crash into, it's your fault, this is what covers that. It's a required coverage, about 20 to 30% of a total premium. I think for mine, it was 26% of my premium. So it is a big chunk of the premium and it does not cover your car in the accident, right? So it'll pay for the porch that you crash into, but it won't pay for your car. <laughs> 
And you're probably wondering, okay, how much of this should I get? Uh, the rule of thumb is really to aim for 100,000. Uh, if you can't afford that, try and get to 50,000. Just like bodily injury liability, this one's pretty important, especially if you live in a high income city. And if people around you are driving sort of Teslas or really expensive cars that would cost a lot to get repaired if you hit them, uh, it's it's really important to have this coverage. So you're not paying for all of the damage that you did to this person's car out of pocket. Have the insurance companies pay for that. So the considerations here are, you know, how safe of a driver are you? How likely are you to get into a accident that is your fault? Um, and another really important kind of consideration here is, is what is the cost um, of sort of the other cars that are being driven in your community, right? So I, for example, live in a high cost city. I live in Silicon Valley, which is a pretty expensive place to live. And I'm telling you like everyone, even the grandmas are all driving Teslas and it's like, incredibly scary for me in my like little little Honda, you know, because if I hit them and I cause, you know, that accident and it's my fault, I'm screwed. So, you know, if you are living in a higher expensive city, you might want to aim to get more coverage. Of course, if you're in Kansas and it's like, you know, the cars aren't worth that much or something like that, then maybe you can get lower coverage than what's on the screen. So um, just something to think about. So when I talk about the next element of car insurance, you're gonna hear me throw around this word deductible. And pretty much all that means is that that is the amount that you are gonna pay before the insurer comes in and pays for the rest of the claim. So generally speaking, if you get into an accident, you would pay your deductible, uh, and then the insurance company would pay, you know, the total cost minus your deductible, and they would pay that amount. So on the screen here, I have kind of an example of a case where you have $3,000 worth of damage and different deductible amounts and what you would pay and what the insurance company would pay in each scenario. So you can see on the screen sort of the effect of a deductible as you increase it, right? So we start at no deductible, which we'll call the base number, and then increasing your deductible to $1,000 is gonna save you about 165 bucks per year, right? And then increasing it to 3,000 would save you about 172 bucks per year, which is pretty close to a thousand. So that's where you would kind of decide, okay, maybe I'll just set it to a thousand because the difference isn't that much. But immediately you can see that there's a huge, huge difference between not having a deductible and moving it to a thousand dollar deductible. So I'd highly recommend using that as a way to save on your premium. So keep in mind when you are raising your deductible, you are committing to paying that amount in the event of an accident. So, you know, make sure you have that amount of money on hand. As your deductible goes up, the cost of your insurance per month goes down. And that kind of makes sense, right? You are basically telling the company, hey, look, if I get into an accident, I'm willing to put in more money. So, you know, please give me a saving or something, right? And the insurance company says, okay, fine. If you are, you know, if you are gonna put in more money in the event of an accident, okay, fine, we'll reward you by lowering your premium, right? Because you at that point have more to lose because you have a higher deductible. You have a higher amount that you're gonna pay in the event of an accident. Definitely use that tip in the future when you wanna save money on your premium. I have a separate video that's fully dedicated to just that. I have the link right here, basically 12 very, very actionable tips, things that you can change tomorrow uh, that will reduce your premium. If anything you found here was was helpful in some way, um, it really, really helps us creators a lot if you just basically hit the subscribe button and the like button. I hate saying it, so I'm gonna shut up. Let's go back to the useful content. Okay, so take a look at this image. Um, what do you see? I, okay, I think I see SpongeBob like, smelling his driving coach, which is a little weird, but okay. Also, you can see that SpongeBob has uh, crashed into like an anchor or something like that. And obviously his boat probably has damages, right? He has kind of screwed up his own boat. Well, that's what this next coverage is for, right? It's called collision insurance and it basically saves us from ourselves. So this is going to cover damage from an accident that's our fault. Um, and it could be really anything. It could be us hitting a pole, hitting a tree, um, hitting a deer, falling over a cliff. <laughs> um, it covers all of that stuff. What it does not cover are damages that are not related to driving, right? So hail, you know, theft or a hit and run, this would not fall under collision insurance. It also does not cover damage to someone else's car. Remember that was 
property damage insurance and it does not cover medical bills. Remember that was bodily injury coverage. So this is typically optional coverage and it's about 30% of a total premium. Okay, so since it's optional, should you get it? Should you not? What's the deal there? Well, it really depends on how much your car is worth. So typically if your car is worth $5,000 or less, you might wanna look into not getting this coverage and just saving that money, right? So for example, if your car is worth $3,000, is it really worth paying $200 per month to insure it for an accident that you cause? I would argue no, but that's again, a personal decision that you should make based on your own risk aversion levels, right? Now, in all other cases, you probably should get this, right? If you have a more expensive car, you should get this coverage, but what you can do is you can actually increase the deductible so that you pay less per month. Now, of course, again, this means that if you get into an accident, that's your fault, you will have to pay that deductible amount, but you get to save money every month that you don't get into an accident, that's your fault. So kind of up to you to decide, but if you are a safe driver, you'll end up saving more money by having a higher deductible. By the way, if you are currently looking for car insurance, make sure to watch the step-by-step -step video that I made. I have a ton of practical tips, way to protect your privacy. Yeah, just so much in there uh, that you should definitely watch before buying car insurance. So you can click the link there. So highly recommend opening that up in a new tab. It'll be information for life. Definitely worth it, I think. The last thing I want to say about collision insurance is to basically give you a few examples, right? So on the screen, I have three different people. Carl, for example, has a car that is a little older and it's basically worth about $3,000, right? Uh, and his total net worth is about $4,000, which means he has that money in savings, right? He is the type of person who I would say, you know, might be better off by not getting collision insurance because his car just really isn't worth that much and he should just kind of aim to to drive it super carefully, save the money, you know, whatever the 200, 150 bucks per month that he would be paying for collision insurance, save that money and instead, you know, focus on driving really safely. And then he can, of course, later on use that money saved to buy a better car or whatever. Sienna and Lisa are a little bit different, right? Cause they have much more expensive cars and they have sort of the savings to have a pretty high deductible, right? So those are the people who I, I would recommend should go into the car insurance quote and play around with the deductible level and see what they're happy with and what gets them the best savings for the amount of money that they pay. The tip that I would give to anyone looking for collision insurance, you should pretty much on the quote, play around with a $500 deductible or a $1,000 deductible or a $3,000 deductible and see what the cheapest you can get for the amount that you pay per month is and kind of settle on the best one that way. We also have comprehensive insurance, which is basically any kind of non-collision type damage. And sometimes we call them acts of God, right? So it could be an earthquake, hurricane, it could be hail, it could even be a hit and run. So all of those would fall under comprehensive insurance. So this is an optional coverage and it's typically about four to 5% of a total premium. The fourth component of car insurance is comprehensive insurance, which is basically going to insure you for non-accident or non-collision type damage, right? So this could be like acts of God type damages, right? So earthquake, fire, hail, all of those, along with sort of hit and runs and really any non-collision type damage. So this is an optional coverage and it's typically four to five percent of your total premium. So it's pretty cheap. The rule of thumb here is to basically get the coverage and set a high deductible. And again, this is where you can go ahead and play around with the deductible amount to see how low you can get it per price that you pay per month. So actually on the screen, you have two examples. This one guy, like this poor guy has a giant tree fall over on his car. And the second image is basically a real image from Hurricane Katrina where all of these cars are going to need comprehensive insurance to basically cover that. Otherwise they are going to have to replace their entire car. Okay, we're almost done. Done. The fifth type is basically uninsured or underinsured motorist protection, right? So what this is, is basically if you're in an accident and it's not your fault, but the other person does not have enough insurance or does not have any insurance to cover your damages, basically this insurance helps you in those cases. 
in this case, it's the other person who was at fault. So they should be paying, right? But a lot of times people who are underinsured or uninsured don't have the money to pay for all of your damages, right? So this insurance covers accidents in which you are not at fault, but the person who is at fault does not have enough or any insurance to cover your damages or your body injury. So for example, let's say someone who doesn't have insurance hits your car, hurts you, you know, and you have 10, $10,000 of damages sort of for your car and your body. Well, technically they have to pay, right? It was their fault, but typically, but let's say they're just being really frustrating and they're not paying, or maybe they don't have enough money to pay, right? So typically to get that money, you would have to sue them, which is like a horrible thing to do. And it just, even the logistics of it is, is terrible. So what this insurance does is it basically says, okay, if that happens, we'll cover you, you know, we'll pay for all of the damages to your card, any bodily injury you have, we'll cover it. And so you have that peace of mind in case someone who doesn't have insurance hits you. In terms of the rule of thumb, generally this is actually pretty cheap. It's about five bucks per month. Um, I think I got mine for three bucks a month. So honestly, just get it. Insurance is not where you want to skimp out. So this is something that is worth getting, I think. So med pay is basically something that's going to cover you and your passengers medical bills. And it basically does not matter who caused the accident, right? So the difference between med pay and bodily injury liability is that basically med pay covers you and your passengers regardless of fault. And bodily injury liability only covers the people you hurt when it's your fault. This can get kind of confusing. So again, check it based on your state. Most people get this as a substitute for health insurance because if they get into an accident and they have to use their health insurance, some people worry that they, their health insurance will uh, increase their premiums. In my state, this actually comes in after um, health insurance. So it's not quite as useful, but it is usually very cheap. Okay, finally, the last one, holy crap. <laughs> There's so many of these, too many. Personal injury protection, which basically very state by state. So I'm not going to say too much about it because it might not apply to you guys. But effectively what this is, is a no fault coverage. It's kind of like med pay, but with a threshold. So there's a certain amount of medical bills you'll need before it kicks in. And it basically also covers, you know, loss of income, wage, loss of wage, that kind of thing. So I'm actually not going to go too much into this because it varies state by state. For example, in California, it really doesn't play that much of a role. In other states, it's actually a required coverage. So check your state. And then finally, when you fill out the insurance quotes, you're gonna see two other offerings that are kind of like extras. The first one is emergency road service, almost like, you know, if you've heard AAA. So this is going to include labor to change a tire, if you need to get towed out of somewhere, all those kinds of expenses. Uh, it's again, also very, very cheap. I think mine was like $1.97 per month. So I just got it. I was like, you know what? Maybe this is gonna come in handy, why not? And another cool thing is that using it will not affect your premium. The final one is rental reimbursement. This is actually one that I don't recommend. It's basically coverage for any rental cars that you drive. So one thing to note is that most credit card companies already offer you rental car coverage. So if you have a credit card, most likely you already have this coverage. So there's no need to get a duplicate version. The other thing is that the price point usually doesn't make it worth it, right? So as an example, for me, it was 17 bucks for every six months, which like I don't rent a car every six months, you know, like I rent a car once a year, maybe at most. So I'm not gonna spend 40 bucks a year for maybe renting a car. So kind of TLDR here is if you're not planning on renting a car anytime soon, just decline it. And even if you are, you can always get it, you know, when you are renting the car. And even if you do rent a car, you probably have coverage under your credit card or worst case, you can get it from the company when you rent the car. All right, hopefully that was helpful. I tried to cram as much information about car insurance as I could into basically four videos. I mentioned a few of them already. The first one is basically a step-by-step -step how to buy car insurance. Super, super, super useful. The other one is basically, if you live in California and you're buying insurance, I basically did a lot of research for myself. And so I made a video of everything that I would tell my friends and family about getting car insurance. On the other hand, if you're basically like, you know what? I just want to save money. Like I don't really, I'm not really buying insurance, but I just want to hear how I can save on my premium. I have another video, which is basically explaining, Hey, like what factors affect your premium, right? Like what causes them to increase or decrease. But then if you just want only the actionable tips on saving on a premium, uh, I have a video with basically all of those tips, uh, which you can see all of the links here. Thank you so much. You guys are great. Comment and tell me if this was helpful. Just drop a quick yes or no. And if not, then just tell me what kind of information you'd want me to add and cover and I will do it for you guys. Thank you so much and talk to you soon. Aww. What happened? 
I am not an investment or insurance advisor. All opinions are mine alone. The content is for informational and entertainment purposes only. You should not construe any such information or other material as legal, tax, insurance, financial, or other advice.